Okay, hello everyone. Let's get started. So we continue with our uh, Java tutorials for beginners and today we'll talk about primitive types in Java. So that is we'll talk about type of primitive variables we can uh, declare and use in our uh, programs. Uh, by now I assume that you have already uh, installed and configured your development environment as well as Java software development kit. So if you have not done that yet, it's the right time to do that. If you have any doubts how this could be done, well on the top right corner you can see a link to our previous video uh, where this is covered in details. Okay, other than that let's continue so today we we'll discuss primitive uh, types of variables in Java so on your screen right now you can see all primitive tips types available in Java so they could be uh, divided into three parts so the first the major one is integer so in this type of variables we can save integer type uh, data. Uh, so the only difference as you can see is in minimum and maximum value and depending on that also size of this variable in memory differs. Uh, so the simplest one is byte so it takes only 8 bits in the memory and the minimum value is minus 128 and the maximum one is 127 yeah so here we have minus 128 and here only 127 because of zero right okay so that's the simplest one also we have a primitive type called char which is 16 bits long and there we can save one character one uh, character any character defined in unicode table yeah so like we can see in example column it could be a letter it could be a digit or anything else right so on wikipedia you can find a unicode table and any character listed there could be saved in char but only one character okay so if we want to save more than one character then in java it's not possible uh, using primitive types uh, for, that, uh, for that purpose we should use a class what is class what is object we'll talk about in next videos uh, so for now it's out of scope uh, so the next one is short it takes 16 bits so two times uh, bigger size than byte and so what can be saved here starting from minus 32768 to plus 32767 okay and finally int so the most common integer type primitive type in java 32 by uh, 32 bits it takes in the memory and as you can see quite big numbers could be saved there and the most uh, the most uh, big so to say primitive type of integer in Java is long so it takes for uh, 64 bits of memory for each variable of that type but as you can see the uh, the numbers which could be saved there are really huge uh, so starting from minus this number and up to plus this number could be held there okay so that's about the integer types also we have floating point uh, primitives uh, 
we have two types float and double and as you can, as you can see the only difference between them is the size uh, like we had here long hint short and byte the only difference is size uh, the same applies to float and double uh, so and of course it's a good practice uh, to create a variable of the corresponding type that you actually need. Uh, for example, if you want to uh, store, let's say, integer with value 5, for example, yeah, and you know the, that the biggest value of that particular variable could be 10, for example, it's not a good practice to create a variable of type long. Uh, so the best choice would be byte, obviously. Uh, so that applies not only to integers, but floating point variables as well. Uh, so take a variable type which fits your needs the best, right? So in that sense, you will save some memory. Of course, uh, maybe it doesn't make sense if you have a small program which uses, for example, five variables. So there wouldn't be any difference whether you create uh, variables of type byte or long. But uh, if you consider creating a program with thousands or millions of variables, right? So in that in that case, it really makes sense. Uh, and finally, two other types. So the boolean. Okay, which uh, takes only two values, true or false, right, so it's a logical variable, and also we have void, so sometimes it is mentioned like a primitive type, sometimes it's not, uh, but void is just a empty set, void, so it uh, doesn't contain anything or it doesn't return anything. Uh, Okay, so that's void. Okay, so that would be all related to theory. And now let's jump to our programming environment. So from the last video, you should have Eclipse up and running. Also, it was configured to use Java Software Development Kit. Also, we created this small program to test whether everything works fine or not. Yeah, so if it is, then when we compile a program and execute it, we should have a hello world in our terminal. Okay, so we checked once again, everything works as it should. Okay, and now let's, let's get our hands dirty with Java. Okay, so we know there are eight primitive types of variables in Java. So how to use them? How to declare? Uh, so first of all, in order to be able to use a variable, we should declare it. Right? So we should explicitly say to Java, I'm going to use a variable with this name, with this type. Okay? So how it is done? Uh, very simple. So first, we write a type of variable, for example, int. Yeah, so as you could see here, int. Yeah, so primitive type int. So we declare that we are going to use a variable of primitive type int. Then we specify a name for this variable so that uh, Java would know. Uh, for example, if we want to save something to that variable or to load from it, we, sh uh, we should uh, somehow be able to, to access it. Yeah? So we should say, hey, please return a value stored in that variable. Yeah? But to be able to say that, we should give a name to that variable. Okay, so type variable name. Yeah, basically that's all. And as all commands in Java, we should put a semicolon once we are done with our command. Yeah, so each command, each instruction, each function in Java should be terminated by a semicolon. Okay, so basically two options of 
variables declaration yeah so the first one we just declare a variable so type and name another option is also to assign an initial value initial value to uh, to our variable yeah? so let's say we create test one and want to assign some initial value so it's one okay everything works fine and also obviously we can't have two variables of the same type right so we get if we try to do that you see we already have it a variable called test if we try to create a new one it could be also of a different type but anyway we get an error yeah, and what we see here is a duplicate local variable test so it said that such variable already exists right so we should avoid that test free okay and one interesting moment so in Java to declare a variable so at uh, first we specify a type of variable and then a name uh, so if we uh, talk about a different uh, Java like language called Scala there we have uh, the opposite behavior yeah? in Scala first we declare a name of variable and then type yeah? just an interesting fact okay so once we have uh, defined our variables we can also assign some uh, values to them like we did here yeah so this equal sign in Java as well in the most other programming languages it means assignment yeah so we we don't say that test one variable is equal to one no what we say here is that we assign value one to our variable test one right Okay, uh, so we have also test, so to assign a variable, uh, a value to variable, we just do that using uh, assignment sign equal, right? Also, we, if we talk about integer type variables or uh, double type variables, so numeric variables, yeah, we can do all mathematical operations like summing uh, let's say test one plus test okay and here we have an error very interesting error it says invalid assignment operator yeah so we have test one defined we have a value in test one we have test we have value in test so we write an expression which should return a sum of these two variables but we don't make any use of this summing operation so we don't save it to a variable we don't uh, let's say print it out on the console so we don't do anything with that result so is so that's why in terms of Java this operation is useless yeah and that's why it says so invalid assignment operator so what we can do for example we can save that result in a variable sum so in that case everything works fine yeah and here you can see we have a warning yeah and the warning says that the value of this variable is not used yeah? so it's a warning so it doesn't prevent us from compiling and running our application yeah? and if we have an error it it does prevent us from running it yeah we can run but we will end up in exception yeah, so it says errors exist. Do you want to proceed? Okay, let's proceed. But you see we have an exception, so it doesn't work. So it doesn't make any sense to launch it. Okay, so what we can do to avoid that, we should somehow use the result of this operation. Either we assign it to a different variable or like here we can just print it out it will also work 
OK, it also works, as you can see. OK, let's, let's compile. OK, you can see we just print out the result. It's 4, obviously. 1 plus 3. OK, um, another interesting thing. Uh, for example, we have declared test 3. And if we try to, for example, print it out, we get an error. And the error says that this variable may not have been initialized. So we can't use it in terms of uh, printing out or somehow accessing its value without assigning any initial value. Yeah? So when we create a variable but uh, don't assign any variable, uh, any value to that variable. So the first thing we should do before we can actually make use of it, we should assign some value to it, right? Ample test free equals eight. Yeah? So in that case, okay, we have assigned a value to that. So now we can print it out. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, and we can see a quite interesting behavior as both double type and float are floating point uh, variables. It means that we should have a something after dot always. Uh, even if we have eight, yeah, which is integer, but as test free is of type double anyway, it will be automatically converted by Java to floating point. Yeah, so for floating point uh, numbers, we also always have something after dot. Yeah, if it doesn't exist, we have just dot zero, right? And the last thing for today, if we uh, sum up or anyhow differently interact with uh, two different types of variables, for example, integer and double, in a result, we'll get a double. Yeah, so that's the thing uh, to remember. Test one uh, minus test three. Okay, so test one is of type integer and test three is of type double. Yeah, as a result of this, we'll get a number with type double. So that's always if we interact with integer and double or any integer type and floating type numbers. Either we multiply it, sum or do anything else. So the result will be a floating point number. Yeah, please remember that. Okay, and that also concludes our lecture on primitive types available in Java. Uh, thanks for all, uh, to all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Should you have any questions or comments, you are welcome to post them below the video. Just don't hesitate, ask. I will always answer to anyone. Okay, and the next video of our tutorial for Java will be available in the upcoming two or three days and as promised we'll talk about the most fundamental concept of Java that is class and object. Yeah, what is class, what is object, how they differ. Okay, but that's all for today. Thanks for, for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.